I don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partou is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No, we are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I travel to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward. And since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young, but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. Did you notice anyone else? What about the doctor? I notice that you've asked me about everyone, except for the inspector who went in the direction of the freight car a few minutes ago. Isn't that the Frenchman who made his name when he caught the raven? I wouldn't quite say caught. Well, shot. Why don't you ask me about him and my theory about what he's doing here? I don't think we should discuss Inspector Legrand's investigation in public. Legrand, right. That was his name. Will he save the day again? Or will you, Constable? As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seem so uh, eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it? Your chance? I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent. But she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt. And a difficult bus, from what they say. Uh, Mrs. Miller? 
Yes? The little boy, Matt, he's your son? Oh, yes. <gasps> Has he done something? No, no. I've already met him. Clever little fellow. We always call him Professor because he's so precocious. If only someone could just drive the mischief out of him. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my work. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. You have to tell me if that's not all right with you. Good Lord, child. Knit as much as you want. So, nothing out of the ordinary? No, Constable. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally, he would offer them discreetly after dinner. The little label on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then closed the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At the very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen. When did you... When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich, on the platform. James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything. Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. If I might ask you a few questions about your fellow passengers. I thought he was looking for my purse. James, tell him to look for my purse. The Baroness wishes that you search for her purse. But couldn't we perhaps... <sighs> All right. First, the purse. I... <sighs> I will have a look around. Thank you. Scotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. Hmm, maybe if I just suck it. I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. Locked. Hmm. Where could he be? The drawer is locked. And the steward probably has the key. But where is he? 
pad on which the steward writes orders. Empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard-to-open packages. These days, nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup in small bags. I couldn't believe it. I'll leave the scissors here. If I need them, I know where to find them. A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become in the last 10 years. Can I help you? Tell me, did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No. Just routine. Constable Zellner, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legard is his name, if I recall correctly. Legrand. If you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. I do indeed have a theory, but what's yours? A ruby was stolen in London. One of the legendary Eyes of the Sphinx. The second jewel, an emerald, is rumored to be in a Swiss bank vault, if I remember correctly. Both jewels were supposed to be exhibited together in Cairo for the first time in 50 years. It does make one wonder. Indeed. Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. Well, one cannot execute a robbery of that scale without uh, collateral damage. It seems like the Raven has finally found a worthy successor. We can look forward to new and spectacular coups. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. May I borrow your newspaper? You can take the section with the article on the burglary. You're interested in that bit, aren't you? <laughs> You caught me out. Here you go. Dankeschön. There's something else. Do you know where the conductor is? Hmm. I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves and didn't bother getting back on the train if we don't crack down on vermin like them. The rabble will rule the world one day. Well, at the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He's not here doing his job. That's bad enough. I meant to ask, the Baroness is missing her purse. A Baroness? This train is really full of the creme de la creme. The Queen of Crime is over there, and now a Baroness as well. Have you seen the purse? Unfortunately, no. Do you know Lady Westmacott? You were talking to her. Well, I'm an admirer of her work. Like so many others. I once read in the newspaper that only Shakespeare and the Bible sell more copies than her crime novels. I read that too. 
She must be filthy rich. As a doctor, I'd have to work a thousand years to earn that kind of money. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. See if there's any news. Blah, 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 blah. Eye of the Sphinx. One of two priceless jewels. Extraordinary pure ruby. 2000 BC, etc., etc. Old news. And here, shocking burglary. Professional thieves surprised by museum guard Charles Langley and Constable Robert Oliver of Scotland Yard. Explosion. Not really anything new. One of the two eyes of the Sphinx, a ruby that's nearly 4,000 years old, was stolen from the British Museum. The burglar was surprised, but managed to escape with his loot without being recognized. That's the official story. But it says nothing about Legrand and the second eye. Luna's Drops, the calming herbal liqueur for women. A glass a day, it relaxes the nerves and maintains domestic tranquility. Luna's drops, if you don't want to bother your husband. <laughs> hmm, a story about the upcoming Oscars and Cleopatra's chances of winning. An incredible feat, they build the largest movie set of all time in Rome. And because of the main actress's many illnesses, several changes of director, months of delays, cost shot to over $14 million. The most expensive movie ever made. A record never to be broken. John Surtees won the Formula One World Championship for the first time on Saturday. He also won the World Championship in motorcycle racing from 1956 to 1960 making him the only man in motorsports to win world championships in both motorcycle and Formula One events. Hmm, not really my cup of tea. Too loud, too fast, too much exhaust. <laughs>